Hi, I have a patient who made a huge change with her diet about six weeks ago. And uh, here's the story. It's pretty amazing. So this patient is actually my office manager and her husband. They've been with me for nine years. I've given them every pill and we've done every single diet. But here are their symptoms. So my office manager has had really severe allergies around her eyes and nose, eyes turning red, plus body pain such as back pain and she's been trying to lose weight. So she's been keto, she's been fasting, uh, and I've done all these uh, supplements for her. Her husband, high blood pressure, 170 over 110. We're talking all these years. And six weeks ago, they bought a course on the carnivore diet from an author named Maria Emmerich. You can get this online. And they didn't tell me they did this. And now it's been six weeks, and here's the changes. Her allergies are gone. Her body pain is 70% better, and she's lost 16 pounds. His blood pressure is now 120 over 80 on no medications. He was medicated before, but actually now he's taking like half of a pill every other day. So, he's, so his blood pressure is being con under control because of the diet, and he's lost 20 pounds. Now, what's special about this when I say the carnivore diet? Well, their version is no plants in any form, in any way. No salads, no vegetables, no avocado oil, no olive oil, no coconut oil. They're using tallow, and they're eating meat, water, salt, and that's it. So in other versions of the carnivore diet, it can be loose, like some people can handle the vegetable oils, the fruit oils. They can handle carrots, etc. But I, I asked my office manager, what are the foods that were bad for you that you stopped? And here's her answer. Carrots, asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumbers, Brussels sprouts. These are the foods that were causing her inflammation, allergies, inability to lose weight, and body pain. These are the foods that were causing him to retain weight and to spike his blood pressure up so crazy dangerously high. Now, let me share with you a couple more examples of a dietary change that will give you this roundabout uh, knowledge on how you might want to apply this into your life. So I'm going to tell you about my diet over the weekend. On uh, Saturday, I skipped breakfast and lunch, and I had dinner. I worked outside all day. It was great. I'm in Michigan. It's July right now. We have three months of good weather, and I had my shirt off. I was getting the sunlight. And that's, that actually helps. It, it actually does help. And so I went 24 hours with no food. Dinner was uh, triple, two triple cheeseburgers and then a bowl of chili. But that's six burger patties with cheese on it. Sunday morning, woke up. I had four eggs. For, for lunch, I had uh, chicken livers and I had smoked trout. And I forgot what I had for dinner. And then Monday morning, I woke up, skipped breakfast skip lunch. I had dinner at 6.30 and I had a 22 ounce porterhouse steak at Outback Steakhouse. Now I was with there with a friend and he got meat but I also had a side dish which was Brussels sprouts drizzled with honey with maple syrup and before the my meal came out uh, that came out I, I sampled one of his Brussels sprouts and it tasted okay. And then, so I eat my 22 ounce steak. He has his dinner, but um, he left most of those Brussels sprouts. And I said, can I have another? He goes, you can have as many as you want. You can have all of it. So I had four more Brussels sprouts and I kept talking to him. We're having a conversation and now I'm burping and I'm burping. And I told him I'm burping because of those plants. It's the plants that are causing the symptom. It wasn't 22 ounces of meat. Meat is innocent. Plants have oxalates, phytates, salicylates. They have lectins. You've heard of gluten. These are all poisons. That plants have these chemicals in order to punish you for eating their stems, leaves, roots, tubers. That's the plant. The plant does not want you to eat it. It wants you to eat the fruit. Just like a bear or deer eating the fruit and then it walks 50 miles down the path and poops it out. The seeds remain intact through the digestive system. 
Now, having said that, you may have known about a guy named Paul Saladino. He calls himself the carnivore MD. He's eating 150 grams of fruit of uh, carbohydrates per day from fruit. And he's even putting honey on his burger. I'm not promoting that because then you don't get into ketosis. Ketosis is a unique physiological state in which your body starts to catabolize pathogenic or pathological tissue. You want that to occur in your body. So he's in Costa Rica. He's in the sun all the time, surfing three hours a day. And the fruit there grows wild. So he has, and he's eating raw testicles, uh, raw spleen, raw brain, and then he has muscle meat. And I'm pretty sure he, he cooks that. But the point is, his diet is carnivore plus fruit. Now, when you look at um, anthropology and uh, epidemiology of tribal diets, along the equator, their diet is still primarily meat. It's monkeys and stuff like that and fish. And yet they have fruit available every day in the wild and they do eat that, but it's not the basis of their diet. The basis of their diet is fat and protein from animal foods and then fruit is secondary. So I just gave you various examples of eating and then the successes that have occurred, um, whether it's just pure carnivore with nothing from plants, including the, the fruit oils. And in my case, I did a couple days of fasting over the weekend, felt great with it. And then Paul Saladino eating the meat, raw meat, plus some fruit. But in all these examples, the vegetables are the detriment. They're the enemy. They're, those are where the chemicals are stored that punish you. Now, yesterday I was talking to a patient, and she's only been with me for about five days, or five weeks, I should say. And she's one of the worst cases of GERD I've ever seen. Acid reflux, burning, pain, difficulty, um, swallowing food. Uh, she has to sleep sitting upright or else the acid comes up into here. And she's been with me, like I said, five weeks. And I was on the phone with her. She's out of state on vacation right now. And I said, look, this is what happened to my office manager and her husband in the last six weeks. I need you to stop eating plants. And in the background, I hear somebody laughing. And I said, who's that? And she goes, that's my sister. She just told me this a few hours ago. I said, okay, great, we're, we're in agreement. But, and she goes, but I love my salads. And I, I eat a wide variety of plants and I put olive oil on top of my salads and it's bountiful and it's uh, rich in color and flavors. And I was like, yeah, but it's causing your GERD. It's the detriment. And there's no other pills that you can take to combat these plant chemicals that are causing harm to your body. Now, in 1991, there was a marketing campaign about eating your five fruits and vegetables per day. This campaign has nothing to do with science at all. It wasn't a program from the government, and not that the government knows what they're doing because they don't. This was an industry-led cam marketing campaign to get everybody to think that way. And there's no science behind that. It's only survey. It's only epidemiology. And when you do clinical science and clinical trials. Um, and you, you can look this up on PubMed. There's Dr. Georgie Ede from Harvard. Um, she has done this. And when she looked up the clinical science on are plants good for us, she found more clinical studies saying that plants are detrimental than beneficial. There are so many people who have detrimental effects from eating vegetables and they go to the doctor with these symptoms and the doctor says, eat more vegetables because that's the party line. That's the religion of conventional uh, medicine and our society today. The symptoms can be from head to toe. It could be pain in the feet. It could be migraines. It could be digestive problems, fatigue, depression. And uh, Dr. Georgia Ede, who I mentioned earlier, just was involved in a study regarding the ketogenic diet and then deep psychological mental health problems such as schizophrenia. And in the study, they put these people on the ketogenic diet and 100% of them felt better. Not that they were completely cured, but at least they felt better, 100% of them. So people can blame uh, society's ills and lack of money and what's being said on the TV news about for their depression. 
for the anxiety and um, the fact that their mom yells at them. Yeah, these are all stresses. But you put cauliflower in your mouth or broccoli, that's anti-thyroid. That's a goitrogen. It causes thyroid problems. And if you're eating French, you know, French fries, junk food, obviously that has a huge role in uh, poor mental health. But it's the meat that is the that reverses this. It's fat and protein that heals your tissues. Your brain is mostly fat and water. Your body is fat and protein. And um, there's no plants that can make up for the lack of meat. Back in during World War II, I just learned this recently too. The American soldiers had a ration of one pound of meat per day. And people think now like, oh my God, that's so much. You know, my doctor says I can only have like this much or three ounces per day. And if the soldier was injured, their ration of protein per day was 250 grams. Now a steak and red meat is like part fat, part protein, but the ration of 250 grams of pure protein easily exceeds over a pound of meat per day. Meat is food. Plants are not food, but plants can be medicine. It's the secondary metabolites. These are chemicals that plants make in order to smell a certain way as defense chemicals, uh, like for example, poison ivy, the poison, that's a secondary metabolite. The colors in the flower, those chemicals are secondary metabolites. The texture of the, um, the bark or any sort of woody part, it comes from secondary metabolites. So if you're gonna use plants, you gotta use them as medicine. And that's why I carry so many herbs because it's those chemicals that we're using to change physiology and biochemistry within the body. But, but, but don't consider plants to be food. It's meat that's food. It's plants that are medicine. How do you know what the plants are doing to your body? It's all experimental. So you can stop eating plants for a number of days and see how you feel. And you can stop and start various foods to see how your body reacts to them. Now, there are some people that don't do well with certain kinds of meat. Maybe they don't have a gallbladder. Maybe it's genetic. Um, people in China do better with pork. People in Europe do better with dairy. Uh, I think people in Africa and America do better with beef. Um, people along the coast, like in Japan, for example, they do better with fish. There is a genetic component of what kind of meat is, is best for you. If you don't have a gallbladder, then you have to take in ox bile or bile salts. And maybe you need some enzymes to digest fat, such as lipase. So keep all these in mind. And when I started the carnivore diet, next month it'll be four years of me being on the carnivore diet. It took me more than six months to get used to it, for my body to get used to it. You can't give up on the second day or the second week. This is a long-term lifestyle choice change. Now, your body will give you different symptoms based on what you just ate, or maybe it'll give you no symptoms. But I wanna talk about the body giving you symptoms. All right, I was thinking about this recently because I spent July 4th with my family. My sister has this fantastic uh, full-bred pit bull named Rosie. She's a sweetheart, but if you got a Frisbee and you're th you throw it to her, it's in her mouth, she turns into the most vicious sounding and she's the strongest dog I've ever met. And then they got a new dog, a puppy named Harley, and this dog is a English bulldog. Very sweet, fun-loving, very playful, likes to lick, likes to bite. The point is both of these dogs express their communication to humans differently. And of course, dogs talk to humans, they communicate to humans differently than cats do. All animals are communicating in some way and depending on the species and also depending on the individual uh, of that species. And I was just was like, when I realized this idea, you know, comparing Rosie versus Harley and how they communicated their interactions with me and with themselves and with the other people. I was pretty amazed by that and thinking about, well, you know, the human body also communicates. And even if the body has cancer, it is screaming at you that the mitochondria aren't working and you probably have an infection somewhere and you, and you need to find it. You've never been in ketosis. You have chemical or heavy metal toxins. It is screaming at you that it, there is something absolutely wrong. If you have a blocked artery, that's a sign and symptoms of you have an infection somewhere and you got to stop eating processed food because it's feeding the infection. So just look at all the symptoms that you have. So in the case of my office manager, these um, eye 
redness and dry eyes and allergies, her body was screaming at her, hey, look, you're eating something wrong. And it turned out to be the cauliflower, the Brussels sprouts, the asparagus. So in medicine, what do they do with the symptoms? They squash it. Bam. They, they, they stop it. But we're listening to what you're saying about your symptoms. When I'm on the phone with somebody or face to face, I'm asking questions that seem to be a little bit weird. They seem to be unrelated, but in my head, they're not. So I'm asking questions to try to figure out what's causing what, where, and I need to know a timeline. When A started B, when C started D, like in a calendar timeline, A caused B, C caused D. I need to know that kind of information. So symptoms are your friend and you need, and it's your body's talking to you and you have to listen and you have to be a detective and you have to figure stuff out. Don't just ignore it. Don't just like go to a medical doctor and try to squash it unless, it, unless you need to save your life. You got to figure out what your symptoms are. And um, if you need help with that, you can contact the office. So there's my message. I, I've learned a lot in the last two weeks uh, regarding the carnivore diet and regarding, um, I, it's pretty amazing. As people get better, I'm learning more from them. They teach me and then I get to teach you. Okay, see you at the next video. The next video is going to be amazing. I have an interview tomorrow with a patient who came to, came to us three years ago, diagnosed with endometrial cancer, with metastasis, and cachexia. That was three years ago, and she has no more cancer left. She didn't take any drugs. It's going to be an amazing interview. See ya.